10-year-old with a known cardiac history. He's in full arrest and the monitor shows ventricular fibrillation. All right, you have your scenario, so let's go ahead and get started. Grab whatever your cheat sheet is, Brazo tape, hand heavy, but just remember, red has to go to the head and then you measure to the heel. So you can see clearly this child falls into the zone. All right, on to Scott for a quick tip. So V-fib. V-fib is best described as a jello jiggle rhythm. The jello jiggle rhythm means next time you've got a slow shift, take a bowl of jello. Hook your cardiac monitor up to the bowl of jello and wiggle the bowl. And what rhythm will you get is V-fib. And what is the cardiac output of a bowl of jello? Not much. And what is your patient's cardiac output if they're currently in V-fib? Not a whole lot more than a bowl of jello. So with that in mind, for kids just like adults, the only cure for fibrillation is to D meaning stop fibrillating. So when you shock a kid, the easiest way I've ever come across as to how to do it is called pick up your paddles or pads and count them. Because if you pick up your paddles or pads, how many hopefully should there be? Two. And if there's anything but two, put them down. Someone else should defibrillate this kid. But if you can count, you can shock. Why? Everything in kids is something per kilo. And therefore, the first time it's two joules per kilo. And if that doesn't work, two times two hopefully is four. Good, not a trick question. So if you've got to shock a kid, just simply pick up your paddles and count them. And that's what was taught, is taught, continues to be taught. However, two things you're going to see coming in the near future. Number one, in several countries outside the United States, for years they've taught that if two joules per kilo doesn't work, they go to four. So they're like, well, why are we messing with two? And they, if they have to shock a kid, just simply start at four joules the first time, saying enough's enough. Let's shock them, let's fix it, and get on to our next thing. Number two is in a recently published pediatric defibrillation study. And as you can imagine, that's not easy to do because not a whole lot of kids happily go V-fib. But what they shown in this study was kind of neat, and that's two joules per kilo did not work in a decent percentage of kids. Four joules per kilo did not work in a fair percentage of kids, and they had to go a whole lot higher. Now, why that comes into play is some of y'all remember in the last couple revisions of PALS, they had little tiny note in there that said may consider up to 10 joules per kilo. And many people, understandably, didn't really give it a second thought because we had two, two didn't work, and we went to four. It was easy to remember, and that's what we've always done. But if you look at other countries' experiences coupled with the more recent research, the idea of starting high and then going much, much higher in the horrible event you got to shock a kid is probably something you're going to see far more of coming in the future. <laughs>